congratulations for completing the first chapter. So today we will be talking about um, the budget constraint. Obviously, this is part of chapter two's material. And the focus for chapter two is towards one particular individual's demand for goods. We will also be understanding how this individual chooses his or her demand uh, for the quantity of goods. And just to recap, we will only be analyzing a choice between two goods X and Y. So, an individual has got unlimited ones. That is something that we have established the previous chapter. So, the demand for goods. And goods can be any form of product or service. You know, we've got food like drumsticks and ice cream, uh, services like haircuts and massages, right? So, in order to achieve these ones, this individual needs resources. And we, when we talk about consumers, typically the resources would be money for them to buy the goods. A consumer's preference is represented by what we call the utility curve. And the money is basically a budget which constrains them from achieving more utility from the consumption of goods. So as you can see here, the budget constraint actually constrains the utility curve. So today we'll be going through the budget constraint and we'll be trying to understand it into greater detail. So what is the budget constraint? You are going to find this very familiar, especially from the last chapter. So the budget constraint is actually a graph that represents the various combinations of X and Ys an individual can purchase. And of course, this combination is restricted uh, given an amount of income that the consumer has, or what we call budget. So the key point is given an income or a budget. Now, this is the reason why you might find this familiar. Um, if you recall, in the previous chapter, we understood the PPF. We are still talking about two types of goods, so it's X and Y. The difference is that now the resources, instead of labor or capital, is now income. And typically, income comes in the form of money, right? But we've got income in kind as well. So what is income in kind? It refers to the initial endowment that a consumer has from the very beginning. Um, an endowment of X and Y. So it's basically you are born with this amount of X and Y. We'll talk about this later in the chapter. We now begin learning about the budget constraint using a very simple mathematical approach. So it's just one simple equation. Uh, there is no need to panic about complicating math. To mathematically illustrate the budget constraint, we have an equation that looks like price of X multiplied by X plus price of Y multiplied by Y, which is less than or equal to income. So, we know that Px and Py is simply the price of X and Y, obviously, which is in monetary form, and I is your income, which is also in monetary form. We simply call it nominal income. X and Y is simply the quantity demanded for these two goods. Something else pretty obvious is that the price of X multiplied by the quantity of X represents the total expenditure on good X, whereas the price of Y multiplied by Y shows the expenditure on good Y. So if you add up expenditures on both good X and good Y, you get the total expenditure of this particular consumer. And obviously, this amount has to be less than the income this person makes. So in economics, we assume that all individuals are rational. So they are going to maximize their utility by basically spending all their money. So there's going to be no utility derived from future consumption. So with this few assumptions in place, we can safely say that the individual will spend all of his or her income. So therefore, you get the budget constraint that looks like this. So instead of a less than or equal to sign, I just changed it to an equal sign. So let me give you an example of how the budget constraint might work in real life. Now I'm just going to take out my wallet and I realize that I have got $50 in my pocket. So I'm just going to take it that my income is $50. The price of good X is $10 and the price of good Y is $5. Okay, I want you to imagine that I'm a consumer that only likes good X. So I'm only going to buy good X and zero Y. So the total amount of X I can buy would be simply uh, $50 divided by 10, which is 5. So I've got 5X and zero Ys. But if I'm only going to buy Y, all right, I'm going to have zero X and I'm going to have a total of 10Y. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating. 
so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.